Hello, my name's um, Dr. Ella Seckham. I'm a consultant dermatologist at Southampton Hospitals. Sleep is just so fundamental for children's well-being and children's growth um, and allowing a child with eczema to sleep as well as possible is, is hugely important. So as I think with all children having a regular routine in the evening, bedtime routine, be that a short bath followed by stories and creams um, and getting them to kind of relax into bedtime trying to keep their room as cool as possible, um, that maybe with a window open, turning the radiators off in the room. Um, sometimes reducing the number of cuddly toys, soft, fluffy toys in the room, which, which can keep hold of how dust might, um, can, can sometimes be helpful as well. Cotton bedding, cotton pajamas, um, and for children who scratch a lot overnight, wearing um, special cotton suits, such as skinny suits, um, can be helpful, um, as well as um, other companies. There are, not, there are lots of others around. Um, scratch sleeves as well can be useful. Um, putting the creams on before bed um, is, is often really helpful. And when using a moisturiser with eczema, we have a variety of different creams and ointment moisturizers that can be used. The ointments are slightly greasier and so they tend to last for a bit longer. They don't evaporate off the skin as some creams can do. So I would generally choose to use a greasier ointment moisturizer at night so that it lasts for longer um, during the night for the child and then put the skinny suits um, over the top or, or their normal cotton pajamas. I get asked quite a lot about antihistamines for helping with sleep. We tend to try and avoid antihistamines when we can. Um, eczema isn't really a histamine-driven um, process. Antihistamines can sometimes be helpful because they can be a bit sedating, even non-sedating antihistamines. So if the whole family and the child is particularly fraught from not having slept because the eczema is really bad, then using an antihistamine for a few nights to try and help the family sleep can sometimes be used. But actually the children still scratch whilst they're having the antihistamine and it can lead to daytime drowsiness the next day, which, which can affect concentration and potentially performance at school. So generally would advise um, against um, antihistamines if, if possible. People, parents, families, children would like there to be one thing that perhaps could be changed to switch off the eczema and make the eczema go away. Food allergy um, can often um, be an association, particularly in babies um, and very young children with eczema. Um, but is um, but often they'll then outgrow that as they get older and a new food allergy in an older child is, is much less common. So generally, we wouldn't really think about uh, making any changes to the diet unless there was a clear history or story um, that the family and child were telling us um, in terms of they eat a particular food and every time they ate that particular food, they were getting certain symptoms. Um, or if the eczema was very severe and not um, responding, um, as we would expect to the appropriate um, level of treatments that we had suggested, um, or if there were some other symptoms going on, um, including poor weight gain. So, um, so generally we'd say avoid changing anything in the diet um, unless there's a kind of clear story of eating a particular type of food and, and having a, a reaction to it um, and less advised by um, a healthcare professional. It's really important that children get all the kind of nutrition that they need. They need a wide variety of things and, and cutting things out may potentially um, negatively impact on their development. What we refer to as eczema is in children is actually atopic eczema 
And atopic refers to a group of conditions which include eczema, but also asthma, hay fever and food allergy. Um, and these are associated with kind of increased activity um, of the allergy side of the body's immune system. And what causes eczema is really complex. This is certainly part of it with a kind of overreaction to um, inflammatory and allergy responses by the immune system. But this, an impaired skin barrier is also a really fundamental part of um, what causes eczema. And children with eczema do often have an impaired skin barrier, a protein in the skin that's really important in keeping the skin cells tightly held together called filagrin. There's often a mutation in the gene that produces filagrin in children with eczema, and this can be passed on in families. Um, and this allows um, the skin to dry out through moisture um, evaporating um, from the skin, but it also allows irritants and allergens that may potentially flare eczema to get in through the skin um, as well. This is a question again that I often get asked, and it, you always want to give hope um, and you know it's quoted that around 60% of children will outgrow their eczema um, through their primary school years um, but that still leaves a lot of children who will go on to have either a dry skin tendency or eczema to some degree in teenage years and often sometimes into adulthood as well. Um, so it, it can be really difficult to predict the disease course and it's not always dependent on how severe or how bad the eczema is um, in early childhood. This is a really difficult one and it's often one that um, you can see it at, at different stages of a child's development. Um, it particularly can be a problem when children are starting to become more independent um, in putting their creams on themselves and are able to say that they don't want the creams on and, and communicate that with, with the parents. I think what's really important is to, to get try and get the child on board, um, understanding what the problem is to so say, you know, their skin barrier is a bit leaky and that they need the moisturisers on their skin to, um, to protect their skin and act as a barrier um, to keep it healthy. Um, and then once you've got the child on board and understanding why it's important to do and how it will hopefully help reduce the skin getting really itchy and sore and red and uncomfortable, reduce those episodes, um, if there are particular creams and or ointments that they're not getting on with, then there are lots and lots of different creams and ointments out there. And some are brilliant for some people and some are better for others. And often there is a little bit of trial and error involved. And we as dermatologists will often recommend um, ones that we know patients have particularly gone well with or um, particularly like the ingredients of in terms of not irritating eczema but ultimately it comes down to which one the child likes best and, and which one they're they're prepared to get on so um moisturizers or emollients we call them um, can come in creams or ointments also in gel form and in sprays so there really are a lot of options out there to try and find something um, that works um, Creams can sometimes sting um, when put on very inflamed eczema. Um, so if the eczema is very flared um, and going through a really bad patch, then sometimes ointments, which are blander um, and have less um, preservatives and chemicals in them that can irritate the skin can be better in, in that situation. Another thing to do is potentially just to put a bit of the moisturizer on a small area of skin that hasn't got too much eczema and see how the child responds to that and then slowly build it up if there have been problems.
And the answer to this is a resounding yes. Um, it's really important that um, your child has, you know, as normal a childhood as they can do, um, and they shouldn't be prevented from swimming, particularly as swimming is such an important life skill. There are things you can do to try to reduce the risk of the eczema flaring um, when swimming. So putting on the moisturizer, the emollient before going swimming can sometimes be helpful. And then as soon as the swimming lesson is finished, um, rinsing off straight away in the shower um, and um, drying off thoroughly um, and putting the moisturizer back on.